Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Blue Jays Today. We're your boys. We always got something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And I'm your host, Nicholas Playalog. And we have a very special guest joining us today, folks. We are talking about a legend in the Toronto Blue Jays prospect system. It's the king. Addison freaking Barger. Welcome back, dude. Let's Welcome go. back to the Let's show. Let's go. Uh, we had you on. Um, we had you on. How long ago was it now? Uh, it was during the, it was the end of the season, I think. Like September, uh, August. Yeah, like, like uh, end of August or something. Yeah. yeah. So um, so it's been a minute. Uh, we missed you. What's uh, what's been going on, man? Tell the people how you've been. How the off season has been uh, has been treating you. It's been been good. Just been keeping busy. Uh, just training every day. Basically, that's my off season, just training. Well, my days um, are like eight to ten hours long of training, so it's not yeah, that we, we don't want to um, we don't want to get you in any trouble, and it we you know just showing off the facility or anything, so you don't have to turn the camera around. But just so everybody knows, uh, prior to hitting the record button, Addison was literally flying around the uh, the, the the literally facility in Dunedin here, uh, showing off what he was doing and and working out a bunch. So we know that you are hard at work right now, dude. Yeah, man, I'm I'm trying. Doing everything I can for sure. Yeah, and I want to ask about that too, because you know, like any player, you have some sort of goals in the off season. I'm sure. Uh, what are some of those goals based on what you did last year, uh, do you, like that you're trying to accomplish with your off season right now? Well, for me, uh, physicality is a big thing, so that's going to be a lot of a lot of work in the gym, which is something I can control and I do really well. So that's been successful this off season, and just uh, getting my body in position to stay healthy. You know, missing time last year hurt me a lot, so. I think if I can just stay healthy and be on the field, like, I'll perform to to what I'm capable of doing. Yeah, well, t- well t- tell it. me about that because I uh, – not to cut you off there, but tell me about that because I know that you were – when we were interviewing you last time, um, you were coming off of a bit of an injury. How right. did you, like – how did you bounce back from that? Like, what was kind of, like, the struggles uh, kind of jumping back into a season after coming off an injury? Well, like, just coming back and, see, like, missing two, three months of the middle of the season and trying to jump in and seeing pitching every day is, is, is tough to do. Uh, that's why we have spring training, get ready for the season. So it's kind of like you have to restart completely. Don't swing a bat for six weeks and then try to get back into it. I mean, it takes time. And uh, so it's just an adjustment period. So there's like maybe two, three weeks where you're struggling because you miss all that time. You're trying to get back into it. And right. you don't get a lot of reps before they just throw you out there. So that's the how tough part. Long, how long would you say, uh, you know, for somebody who has not nearly ever played baseball, even remotely close to your level, how long would you say that it takes you – to get back up to speed, you know, like when you're, when you're facing the pitching that you go up against some very talented pitchers, how long would it take you to say that you are, you know, fully 100% you're in time, you're in your rhythm, uh, having, you know, having seen them for a while, like days, weeks, months, how long would you, would you say that it takes? It's a tough question, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, probably just a couple of weeks of consistent at bats. Mm-hmm. You know, depending on how if you're if you're playing every day, then yeah, it might might only, might only be five games before you feel pretty good again. Three games even it c- it can be depending on the work you're doing prior to going to those games, mm-hmm. and uh, and how consistent the ABs are. If you just play twice a week, you know it's going to take a lot longer. If you're playing every day, you know it could be a week that you're you feel comfortable again. But it's it just depends. It varies. Right. It depends on how, what, especially coming back from an injury, if it's still bugging you or not. If you're 100 percent healthy, those are things that play into it. Right, right. And I also wanted to ask, um, because kind of the big conversation right now with the Blue Jays, and I'm not sure if you're familiar or not, but last year, you know, they had a little bit of a dip in the offense. Um, We don't know if it was like a a strategy overall. I want to get into that for sure and kind of get like pick your brain about hitting strategy. (laughs) But uh, what what is your uh, hitting strategy right now? I know that you just said last time you look for something in the middle of the plate, looking to hit it hard. Is that something you're still going to stay consistent with this season? Or are you are you switching something up right now? Uh, I think I, last year I was trying too many different things. So right. I was, cause I struggled and then I was, I was searching for answers. So that was kind of the problem, not just trusting what I do and being uh, clear minded and going out there, you know, it's, it's baseball. It's hard not to overthink when you're struggling. So that was one yeah. thing I struggled with, was just trying to do too many different things. If I just think about, you know, swinging a good pitch to hit and put it and put it in play and hit it hard, good things are going to happen. If you're trying to think about every little thing about your swing, it's, it makes it pretty much impossible. Mm-hmm. So it's more of like a mental thing than anything. The, the mental part of the game is Actually, really important. I used to have a shirt that said um, uh, baseball is 50% skill, 110% mental. It made no yeah. sense, but, uh, I mean, it feels like that every day when you're playing. Yeah, no, it's, it's so true. 
But other than that, yeah, I just get my work off like we have the traject machine, so it's like I can face live pitching virtually off the machine because it projects the whatever pitcher you want to face. Right. So I'll do challenging work like that to work on swing decisions and just that way when I go into the game of spring training, I'll be more ready than just not seeing any pitching and just you know, if I just do arm BP, I'm not really gonna be ready to see ninety five to hundred. Mm. So I do I'll do that a few times a week and put crank up my eye pitch to hundred miles per hour from like forty feet away. That kind of work really gets me yeah. going. Yeah, yeah. It makes it easier to jump in the game and that ninety five now looks yeah a bit easier to hit. Looks like eighty, looks like a juicy curveball yeah. hanging. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, speaking of all the prep work, like I love hearing you talk about, you know, mental part and then what you're doing to get ready. And I guess cycling back to to the Toronto Blue Jays last year, and I guess the the whole conversation of, um, you know, like there wasn't as much power as we've seen in the past from those boys up there, and like, you know, the runners in scoring position was definitely a problem. Like, do you think that? Oh, I guess, what do you think was the the major issue that was holding that team back last year? And, you know, have you spoken to any of those guys? And uh, and are you kind of actively trying to work in, or improve in your own game so that when and if you do make it to the next level, like you can you can help in those areas? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm more just worried about my game. I had a down year and I and I, I hit the ball hard and everything. And I, I ran into the same issue, not not hitting for power like I usually do hitting the ball on the ground too much, which I think we saw with a lot of guys in the big league level too. Like Vladdy, for example, is probably hitting the top of the ball too much. You know, mm. he's, he can just hit the ball in there. It's going to be a homer pretty much. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. You know, I think that's why his power numbers are down. But baseball, baseball is so hard. I mean, it's such a hard game. It's it's never – I'll tell you this. It's never a coach's or any of the – it's never any coach's fault. I mean, mm-hmm. we can go out there with no coaches and be perfectly fine and play the game. We might even be better off without – okay, I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cut it right there. No. <laughs> the point is, like, the coaches are never responsible for the players' outcomes. And right. these guys at this level, the, uh, at the highest level of the game, you're, you're you're not even taking that much input from coaches. You know, you're kind of – you know what you need to do to be successful, and it's pretty much on you. So as far as, like, different hitting coaches and strategy and all that, yeah, you know, tell us what pitches he throws, and then really it's our job to go out there and perform. It's not mm. up to anybody else. And baseball is really hard. So guys are going to have down years, and it's part of it. It's just a hard game. And a lot of it's luck sometimes. You hit a ball hard, you're out. You miss hit a ball, to hit. I mean, what are you going to do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Hard no, it, it is. I mean, like, baseball is such a wild sport. And, I mean, I've always come back to this. It's like literally the, the best player in the league is going to get a hit 30% of the time. And that's right. just crazy. You know, like, that's that's just absolutely – it's always blown my mind. But I think you make some, some great points there. I've, Speaking about the the coaching, though, I think that's a great transition because something that we wanted to talk to you about, um, we want to talk to you about Matt Hag. I mean, he's had like a pretty extensive tenure in the minor league system. Have you ever had an opportunity to, to, to speak with him, to work with him before? He just got the promotion to the big leagues. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. He's been my hitting coach for the last two years. So, okay. yeah. No, What's he, he was like, in, dude? He was Give in double A in 22 in Buffalo last year. Uh, he's good. You know, he's uh, he's considered – he's pretty much considered the best in the business for, for swing guys. So he, you know, we're in good hands with him. No doubt about it. He's, okay. he's awesome. Uh, hey, hey. and he works really hard and he'll do everything uh, you need to get ready, uh, to go out and perform. So, I mean, okay, he's, yeah. he's great. Yeah. So the, give me, um, what would you kind of say? Like he, how does he operate on a day? Cause I, again, there's so many different hitting strategies and philosophies. Like, what do you think like his kind of number one tip to his, uh, hitters would be and to yourself uh i think he he's very focused he's very sw- he really focuses on the swing so he's more of a swing like how's your swing feeling what's it look like i'm right. kind of more on the other side where i'm just thinking i need i need an approach and not think about the swing because and some hitters are different something like that but for him he's he is good at at uh at, at working with guys on their swing his biggest thing i guess that was a question was just being highly adjustable so having a swing that's efficient to be able to hit more than just a fastball or breaking ball, right? Go out there and compete. So it's it's a lot of depth work and that kind of stuff. I don't yeah. lose with that. I don't that remember if we I don't remember if we asked you this last time, but has there ever been anybody in the MLB? Maybe maybe they're not in the MLB anymore. They're not an active player. But has there ever been a guy that you've been like, holy shit! Like I want my swing to look like that. You know, I'm gonna model my swing after that guy. Yeah. No. No. Not really. Hell yeah, dude. Ad- Addison Barger, his own guy. 
Love I mean, it. of course, I'd love to be Barry Bonds, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <all seriously. laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a whole other case in itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, let me ask you that. To build off that question, what about uh, what is something about your game that you you admire or that you wish you could have like another person's part of their game, like whether it be their legs, whether it be their glove, like what is someone around the league that you could, you were like, damn, like that, that would really kind of almost complete me. It feels like as a, as a player, like had that one skill. <laughs> That's a terrible question, but <laughs> <laughs> cause I don't want anybody else's skills or anything. I want. Hey, uh, this, this is what I like to hear. This is what I like to hear. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 uh, I do a lot of lifting to get, big and strong and powerful and i hit the ball super hard but there's still these skinny guys that can hit the ball harder than me so maybe if i had power like them that'd be pretty cool <laughs> actually like a um like a ellie de la cruz the guy's like a twig and hits the ball 120 he's got quite the powerful swing that's for sure yeah i mean it's, and they're all tall i guess if i could be six five put me in right field and hit 40 homers a year i'm chilling sure <laughs> i see we got someone uh someone right here <laughs> yeah she's whining for the <laughs> no worries no worries bro um i maybe this is another maybe there's another dumb question uh but you know speaking of power speaking about going to the gym and stuff and speaking about these small guys who like really just like absolutely annihilate the baseball i mean I, is it do you find that you know the more you go to the gym the more you lift the harder you hit that thing because I, i've also you know heard kind of the flip side of it where it's like well these guys they, they get big they get really strong and then they lose their flexibility, you know, and then it's like, you know, their torque, like they're, they're not hitting it as hard anymore. Do you yeah. find that there's a direct correlation for you? Like, oh, I, I pumped the iron and I am annihilating the baseball. I mean, there, there, yeah, there's just a right way to do it. You know, obviously mm. if I just did uh, bicep curls every day and that's, then I'm not going to, that's not going to translate to power. Like, <laughs> I mean, a lot of guys curls. get big just as an excuse to eat more and just, and a lot of them just get fatter. They do put mm. on some muscle, but they get fatter and they get slower. Mm, the goal right. for me is not to gain so much fat. Just put on a good amount of lean tissue, and and do my explosive work. So I'm moving. I can get not only get bigger but also faster. If my body's moving faster with more mass, I mean it's physics. You're gonna hit the ball harder. Yeah. So mm -hmm. and I track all my exit velos and everything uh, through the off season. And the stronger I get and the more efficient I move, the harder I hit the ball. It's pretty right. simple. Most guys just shy away from the work because it's extremely hard to to take three months and 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 make a big difference physically. So what uh, what number are we at right now? What's the exit velo sitting at? What's it sitting at? Well, yeah. it depends. It depends on where if I'm hitting. Like, I mean, off a machine or off a off an because in the game, obviously, it's gonna be harder. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And BP though, I can I can get up to like one twelve, one thirteen, just an arm BP. Off BP, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So Ooh. I'm hoping I can get up to close to one twenty this year by peak exit velo. Wow. Yeah. That is pretty damn fast, bro. Yeah. That is that is that is no small feat, dude. Okay, you can uh, talk it all you want, like you set it up as like BP and everything, but still, kudos to you, dude. That sounds like a good off season mm -hmm. that you're having so far. Um, certainly working hard. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hey, you're almost done the off season, right? You got spring training coming up. Uh, I want to get your like uh, your foresight right now on the on the upcoming spring training. What are you what are you trying to accomplish this uh, spring training? And as well, has anyone told you about what they want, what kind of role they see you in this spring training, or hell, even this upcoming season? Like, do they have some sort of plan for you? Have you? Do you know anything about that yet? Not really. I mean, not really. They kind of mm -hmm. they kind of uh, keep you in the dark when it comes to that stuff. But when spring training gets going, and we will have uh, we'll have individual meetings and stuff, and they'll kind of go over a plan with you and what they think. So that's usually when you find out. Other than okay. that, you don't really know what's going to happen. You just got to control what you can control and not really worry about it. Right. So for you, then, I mean, and, and I know what you're going to say, but like, what would you say is is the big goal for you this year, 2024, Addison Barger? What do we want to accomplish? What do we want to get done? I want to stay healthy, first of all, because if mm -hmm. I'm not healthy, I'm not playing. Yeah. Obviously, it's going to be playing play the big leagues and help the big league team win. I think that's that's an obvious answer. And yeah. I, think I, I think I'm more than capable of doing that, and I think people know that I'm capable of doing it. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of staying healthy and, and doing what I'm able, capable of doing and not uh, get my head getting away. Right, right. Yeah. And, I, so. and I know that, like, you're just focused on yourself right now. You're not really worried about any sort of outside – you know, uh, impact. You're just trying to focus on your game right now. Uh, but I got to ask because I know Blue Jay fans, this whole offseason, it's been what players are we adding? What free agents are we getting? Et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I'm sure you've heard about the whole Otani hype. 
uh, yeah. and how disappointing that was for Jays fans. But right now, looking at the team, you know, there's a couple holes that we still don't really know about right now. Uh, do you see that as an opportunity potentially as a way to get up with the club? Time for a quick shout out to Betway. Betway is the best place to make all of your sports bets on all of your favorite teams. Betway is also in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Must be 19 years older to participate. And guys, please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's the, the less guys they're paying millions of dollars to be on the field, the more opportunity there is for young guys, you know. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, you can outperform a guy that's making ten million dollars a year, but you're not. They're they're going to keep that guy out there. I mean, if you're getting paid, you're going to be out there. So mm -hmm. it definitely opens some doors. Now you just got to you got to perform, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I know that there's. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, effectively, the entire off season has been doom and gloom because you know a lot of Jays fans and us included to an extent. I mean, like you look at these past off seasons. And the Toronto Blue Jays are going out and they're, you know, they're signing all these guys, they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars to bring in at this outside talent. And so far, not not to say that they haven't already done that to an extent, you know, bringing in IKF and Kevin Kiermaier and then the Ariel Rodriguez too. But it feels like there is more of an emphasis this season, more than most, on that farm system, on, on you guys, you know, to come up and, and maybe play a role at some point of the season. Does it feel like you know, from your standpoint, and then maybe some of the other guys that you've talked to, is that kind of the, the the sentiment right now that's going going around the prospect pool? No, not really. You not really, because we we just never know what they're going to do or what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, right. like I said, we just we don't. We we wish we knew. We wish we had a better idea of like what the hell is he doing? What are they doing? What is the front office thinking? But we don't. And most of the time, we're just honestly just like what you guys are doing, just kind of guessing. Like, what the hell are they doing? Yeah, <laughs> we're in the same boat. So we we don't know. So we, so we don't speculate because we know that we're probably wrong. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, everyone that was listening right now, everyone looks at us for answers, but we're literally two dudes in our living room with <laughs> nine to five jobs. And then we do this, uh, you know, in the evenings. They look at us for answers. I'm like, guys, we, we don't know. So we're having you on. We had to ask you that question. So it's like, there you go, everybody. Nobody hey, knows. Not right, guys nobody in the system know. No. <laughs> Yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> no one has any freaking off. idea. Well, okay, I'll tell you what. You probably know about yourself, and that's what I want to ask you about next. If and when you show up to the big leagues, kind of a kind of a dumb question right here. If and when you show up to the big leagues, I mean, one of the first things, one of the first introductions that a lot of people are going to get of Addison Barger is the walk-up song that's coming. Do we have one in the works? Do, do we already know what that is going <laughs> to be if and when it happens? My walk-up song? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because last year it's been. Uh, it's I've usually the last couple of years it's been system of a down. But I might. I might change it this year. I don't know yet. I should love that song. Or the is it? Wait, wait, is system of a down the song? Is it by what? what, what the, it's, a it's, the, it's a group. It's the group of system of a down. The song mm -hmm. I had was B Y O B. Oh, okay, the, uh, BYOB, okay. The chorus. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of um the same band as that has a uh, Chop Suey, right? Yep, that's System of a Down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Song, I love that song. That's a great. Yeah, one. I listen to some some of it, uh, and then I listen to like seventies. So I have a wide range. <laughs> okay. Okay. But no, I don't know. I, I promise you, this it won't be Drake or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> not representing the six? No. No, not in that way. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Cool. Cool. Um, well, Addison, uh, it's been it's been a pleasure, man. I don't know if there's anything, Nick, you you want to throw out to him. Because uh, I know you're a busy man. Um, well, I will I will tell you this. Uh, we are potentially maybe kind of in the works of going down there for uh, for spring training. Maybe. Uh, where are the spots around Dunedin, dude? Where should we go check out? Where do you Where do you go? <laughs> I don't go anywhere. Dude. You go to the facility. You go to the gym. Yeah, you go the person to talk to. Yeah, I go train. I go to the gym. I come here, and that's it. I, should, I pretty much go home. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm the worst well, person. I mean, there's stuff to do. The other beach, I mean, you guys are from, you guys, yeah. If you're in Canada, then you'll probably want to go see the beach and do all that stuff. I mean, there's plenty of, yeah, there's, no, there's no shortage of things to do here. So, it'd, yeah, it'd yeah. I, I, personally, I, if I'm down there, I definitely want to find a day to go golfing. So I know Florida in the summer, like, sucks for golfing because yeah. it's so Terrible. hot. But yeah. this is apparently the time of the year to go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's nice out. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm Are you, Are you a golf guy at all? 
Uh, I just started golfing this off season. Hey, <laughs> I just started golfing. Okay. I started golfing this summer. Golf. My whole family's golf. So, uh, I, I gotta, you know, the only way I'm going to see them is on the, on the link. So I got to get into it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's fun. It's definitely, uh, what are, it's kind of uh, addicting, but I'm terrible. What are, what, what are we shooting right now, Addison? What, what are we uh, at? I've shot under a hundred a couple times. Dude, that's, <laughs> that's better than me, man. I, if I hit 110, I'm, I'm feeling good. Yeah, yeah. If I shoot around 100, I'm usually pretty happy. Yeah. I have the advantage of coming from baseball. I actually golf righty, and I, I mean, I can, I can, I can drive a golf ball pretty far. I was gonna say you could probably get a hold of that thing, eh? How far does it go for you? Uh, it's not consistent. My my best, I'm, I get like 340, 350. Holy, 340, yeah. Holy. On my best, but usually they're spinny or they're not, you know. Yeah. You just give a slice. Give a slice. I, I actually hit a draw usually, which is good. Okay. But it's not extremely consistent. See, I, my my slice is so bad. I'm a lefty, so I always slice it off to the left every time. So the reason why I hit 110 is I'm just using my seven iron. Yeah. It's the only one I can hit straight. That's uh, it. You, you got to close that face. Come on. That's what I'm trying, bro, bro. I've been in the I've been in the freaking workshops trying to get that thing fixed, but uh, it's gonna it's take hard. a few. It's gonna take a few sessions, that's for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, dude, we're not gonna keep you. Uh, I know that you have a little one running around uh, who, who's got stuff to do and places to be and people to see tonight. So uh, we appreciate you taking the time coming on here, telling us a little bit about, about your process, what you have coming up. Uh, we are the biggest Addison Barger stands there is, dude. So we are we will be there till the thick and thin when it comes to you, dude. We are we are in your corner. We're hoping the best. We want to see you up at the Toronto Blue Jays this year for sure, man. All right, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Definitely. dude. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Cheers, no problem, man. dude. Cheers. All right, everybody. That was Addison Barger. Uh, shout out to Addison Barger once again for just being literally a phenomenal human being. He is uh, he's a great person, and he is great at freaking baseball, and I cannot wait to yeah. watch him come spring training. I'm excited. Guys, uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. $3 a month to become a Patreon member. Shout out thank you to all of our Patreon members and our YouTube members. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for watching. And go, go Chase, go! go!